Hey guys, this is Steven. I'm back for another tutorial. Uh, this time this tutorial hopefully is going to be a quick one. Uh, hopefully I can stay within my 10 minutes. Uh, this one is going to be um, the importance of uh, constraining corners uh, on your objects so you can get a nice specular highlight uh, along the edges of your of your objects and um, help correcting uh, Small issues when you small issues when you're uh, extruding uh, faces on your object or extruding edges um, to correct some um, uh, edge problems when you're trying to constrain your edges and uh, um, trying to keep your edge flow good and trying to create as little extra geometry as you possibly can. Um, so let's get started. Uh, right here I have uh, it's just a plain old cube. And uh, let me do just a quick render of it, and you'll see I've already got uh, light and stuff on it. And um, I don't have it smooth. The edges are already constrained, but uh, I've, I haven't smoothed it out. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay, uh, so if you look at the edges, uh, if the uh, since the edges aren't smoothed, um, the edges are infinitely sharp. So you'll never, ever, ever, ever get a specular highlight um, on the edge of the square. Now the reason why we constrain the edge... Um, is basically putting an edge loop, select our edges here, so we put an edge loop around uh, the edges of the uh, um, your object and what this does is when you smooth it out uh, it tells Maya that you want to uh, keep the edges rounded at a certain point. I'm not going to go into it, I, I talked about this in another, um, another tutorial. Um, I'll, I'll probably do a longer tutorial on ed uh, constraining your edges and stuff, so forth, but this is just a, uh, a a little thingy I'd wanted to get out there. Um, so when you smooth your object uh, without constraining the corners, this cube will literally turn into a sphere because uh, there's nothing telling Maya to keep these edges where they are. So right now um, I have already smoothed this but I turned it off in my input so um, actually I'll show you what I mean. So select your object, go to mesh, smooth and I think I have it on smooth one. Um, so now it's smoothed once. And if you take a look at it and in the render, get a nice specular highlight. And I do have a blend on it so I can get the specular, but if you notice, um, it's not smooth too well. Uh, you get a little edges of white where the, uh, um, uh, it's kind of warping the edges. Uh, uh, that's another long explanation, but we'll, I'll, deal with that later. Um, the reason being this is happening is that you haven't smoothed your object enough and to fix that you can just go over to inputs and it should be the next one down it'll say poly smooth face. All you have to do is just click on it and it opens up all your attributes and in the divisions is what you want. All you have to do is to get if, to get rid of the smooth turn it off just turn it to zero. To up the smooth I uh, usually just go two that's that's uh, usually good. Uh, if you go up to three it, your computer might not like it. Uh, so now that I've got it up to two, render it again, and it's nice and smooth. And you got that nice specular highlight going along the edges, and it gives the uh, your cube or your geometry a little bit extra dimension. It looks more realistic. Now, the thing I want to talk about is uh, the problem we have with constraining edges uh, on an extrude. I showed something similar before when I did the uh, um, attaching cylinders to uh, planes and um, when I created a little a pocket of geometry to uh, um, attach the, the cylinder to. Let me just get my plane set up here. Okay, and what I did was is I grabbed a face and I select the face and I extruded in once, created my little pocket of geometry, and then I just extruded again down and um, or took that out and you know I had my little pocket of geometry. Anyway, um, say in this case you need to extrude down or you're going to be attaching a square object or something like that or you're just um, uh, attaching you know maybe a sphere and you can use this technique but it's it's situational depending on on um, uh, what your project is and stuff so here at this one uh, the problem is is that we have uh, faces all around it and let me insert edge loop inside corners uh, inside edge and now the inside corners we want to constrain the inside corners but the problem with this one is if we constrain this corner the edge loop is going to run all the way along 
this edge here. See that? Now the problem is we have these this extra edges uh, right next to each other, and that's going to create some problems uh, farther on down the line when we have you know our edge loop two two edge edge uh, edges going parallel to each other all the way around. And it'll, it'll just be a mess. So uh, in this situation, all we have to do is just select one of the edges. Obviously, it's the inside edges. Just get rid of those. Hit delete, or actually, the best way to do it is uh, go to Edit Mesh and almost all the way down, fifth one from the bottom is to let delete edge and vertex. So we'll get rid of uh, both the edges and the vertices. And then all you have to do is uh, use a split edge tool and connect the corner to the other corner um, and fill that with an edge. And now you have your uh, um, uh, corners and edges are constrained and you have good geometry, good edge flow, and no extra geometry that's going to screw up your, your project. So let's do a smooth preview here. Let me turn off my wireframe and shade it. So hopefully you can see that. Let me just do a quick render. There we go. And we have a nice edge flow and stuff like that. And the uh, as you can see, it looks very pretty around the edge here. And that's what we want. Okay, now the other problem is, let me just undo all the way because I'm too lazy to start over. Back up to the extrude, get rid of our little pocket, pocket of geometry. Okay, and there'll come a time when you, you can't extrude because the extrude wouldn't be clean. You'd have like, you know, your, your vertices are going all over the place uh, because maybe it's at an awkward angle. <clears throat> so the best, best you know, thing you can do is just extrude straight down. Now the problem is, again, when we go to insert our edge loops on the corner, you still get this double edge here that's going to screw up your geometry. So what we're going to do is just simply select your edges, get rid of the two inside edges. Oh, now let's get rid of the extra vertices on the outside too. And use a split edge tool and connect the outside and inside corners and there you go. Uh, so when you insert your edge loop, you've already kind of created that little pocket of geometry like we did before. We've got our quad, even though the inside corners are incredibly small, it's still a quad, so it's still good. So when you insert your edge loop, there you go. Now, another thing is if uh, you've got like a really complicated setup, lots of geometry, and you don't want to put in the edge loop first because if you put, it, put in the edge loop first, um, you'll have to delete the edge loops that go all the way around your object. Uh, so in that case, you're going to have to manually insert your edge loops. I hate this one. It does this. There we go. So we're going to have to manually insert our edge loops. And by that, we're just going to select the uh, um, split edge tool and just put an edge loop. I'll just insert an edge there. Hit enter. G. Get the same tool used. Okay, and do the same for this side. Now, unfortunately, I can't see how much time I have left, so hopefully I'm still good. And just connect this up here. Okay, so you got this set up here. Now all you would have to do, just take these two edges and just delete the edges, not the vertices that are, that, that are connected to them, just the two edges. Come on, there we go. And go to your split edge tool and just click and drag and it'll stop where it hits the vertice that we did not delete. And just connect it down here and same thing over here. And then again just connect the inside corner to the outside corner and there you go you're all set um, now you'll have more geometry out here you're gonna have to futz with, futz with that but uh, it's just uh, again a little quick to help you guys get around any type of problems you might have with constraining corners while you know having a little bit more complex geometry um, so hopefully this was a little help I, I know when I found this out this helped me out a great deal so um, let me just check how much time I've got
Oh, hopefully... Oh, crap, I went over. Anyway, so hopefully YouTube will take a 12-minute tutorial. We'll see. Okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. If you have any questions, requests, just let me know. Okay, see you guys soon. Bye.